Kajado TV enangena pi ni yetu Barabara kabisa mara nyingine tena hapa ndani ya Kajado TV kiti moto kila wakati tunakuletea watu mbalimbali ambao wanawakilisha Kajado kwenye sekta tofauti tofauti Ladies and gentlemen for the first time on Kajado TV kiti moto we host a conservationist by blood and by passion I call him a hero a lot of people consider him a champion in issues around conservation. He is the winner of the Task Award, a conservation award specifically given by His Royal Highness Prince William. Karibu sana bwana John Kamanga. Yeah, it is a pleasure to have you um, on our program. We are humbled. So maybe we can start uh, by by introducing yourself and uh, Maybe uh, tell tell uh, the people of Kajiado where you grew up in and uh, what kind of environment uh, were you brought up in. Thank you very much. So my name is uh, John Kamanga. I'm uh, the director of the Southern Association of Landowners, an organization that works in the region between the Mara and Amuseli, looking uh, at issues of conservation and uh, supporting communities in livelihoods development. Um, I am from Kajiado. I grew up in Magadi. It's called Orkiamatian specifically. Schooled there, and, uh, you know, continued uh, to high school uh, in Narok in the Mara, where I started to see a lot of wildlife, particularly elephants, which were not in my home area when I was growing up. Yeah, and, and continued uh, from there um, to serve the community in different uh, uh, arrangements. I had a lot of passion to see that uh, personal communities uh, get development. And as, as I did that, um, I worked in different programs over time. Uh, the late program that I'm working with, uh, Soralo, I uh, have been working with them for 15 years. I've been a founding member of the organization. We started off as a volunteer, um, but um, over time managed to really get a lot of followers, a lot of donors who then want to support the idea, and the idea really here is supporting communities for conservation. Um, well, we understand that conservation clearly, traditionally, was run with an, a Western ideology where, you know, spaces that wildlife were, were believed to not have people. Mm -hmm. It's a fallacy. Yeah. It's not true um, mm -hmm. that always in Africa, of African savannas have been areas that people have dominated mm -hmm. and have wildlife. A, a, a lot of people, personally, I, I, I follow you closely. And there's a very popular quote, and, and I will co quote you. I once say that communities are the custodians of wildlife. Why communities? Why are you entrenched so much in believing that communities are the key uh, stakeholder of, of, of issues around conservation? It's a very simple thing if you look at uh, Kenya today. So in Kenya, we have protected areas. Our protected areas are probably uh, in 30 percent of our landscape so 70 percent of our wildlife it's outside in community areas now if you have 70 percent of any of your resource with a group of people those people are key to actually ensuring that that resource continues and so this is why i say wildlife has to be managed today with a very close relationship with the community if we lack that then we have actually lost an opportunity to protect 70% of our life. Uh -huh. Someone might want to understand uh, what is your source of motivation. Uh, conservation is not, not a very lucrative uh, area to, to venture in. Uh, so what uh, can you say is your, or was your source of motivation to venture into conservation? I think many things. I grew up in an area that was open space, having my dad's cows out there, you know, the tiny trees, eating you know, wild foods, and, and so that's why I found myself going to school and every day meeting lions. So it's part of my life. It's not. It's not really. I'm, it's not, I'm more not motivated because there is money around it or for economic benefit. It's just what I have become. But really, for a lot of then growing up as a as, as a person having taking care of livestock in those rain spaces, 
and with my education, I came to understand that those places, if you have a personal community today who 90% are not going to school, whose main livelihood key is livestock uh, production. Clearly, livestock production and wildlife protection go hand in hand. Because these areas, the reason we have wildlife is not because the Maasai are intentionally keeping wildlife. The Maasai are keeping their cows. Wildlife becomes a secondary beneficiary of that open space. Uh, but also just in terms of benefits. I mean, when, when I started to, to, to work, I'm not trained in conservation, right? So conservation is by practice. Uh, I've learned a lot from colleagues, friends, and, and you know, across the globe. My, my area of specialization is development, right? So in trying to do development work in those community areas, I found myself using the conservation as a carrot because conservation Today, um, there is quite a bit of resource that can back conservation. Well, if I were to go and talk to people about livestock, you know, management, you know, how, how we can change breeds, nobody seems to be, there is no, nobody seems to be putting in the capital. But if I talk about development from a conservation angle, then I find a lot of followers who are willing to support those communities in different ways. And for me, the end product is that those communities help those communities to develop. Where, where, where exactly does the issue uh, around development fall? Because I understand we have different types of conservation. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not an expert in conservation, but I understand that we have animal conservation, we have marine conservation, we have en environmental conservation. So uh, what area exactly? Uh, development, thank you. Uh, the, the idea of development, what are we talking about development? Mm -hmm. You want to be able to have people access jobs. You want to have people being able to, you know, children access basic. You want to have um, the ability to support health facilities, you know, make a road, you know, bring water close to people. Now, so that is the story of development. Now, how you fund development varies from one group to another. Today, uh, our president might, you know, go out there and get a loan from the World Bank to support development. The same story. But I can go out there and with the conservation story, be able to bring resources that are able to support all those things. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if we have in conservation, so we combine different things. Mm -hmm. For us to have conservation work, we have to have some product that the community is going to then use as a way to benefit from conservation. Because mm -hmm. you know, you can't tell me just plant trees for planting trees, mm -hmm. just maintain your environment for maintaining. No, mm -hmm. it has to be competitive and therefore there has to be a benefit that is accrued from the conservation story to the communities, to the communities we really to continue having that space. Because we are living with a lot. We are living with a, a, a dangerous animal. Why would I want to live with a dangerous animal? Mm -hmm. Only if there is benefit in keeping it. If there mm -hmm. is no benefit in keeping it, mm -hmm. then I have to get rid of it. Mm, he's John Kamanga, an award winner with Task Award, a special award given by His Royal Highness Tukonai Hapandania. Uh, Kiti Moto Kajado TV. Uh, Mr. John, uh, Kajado County is a big county. Sure. Uh, I think 21,000 uh, square kilometers. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, dynamics on issues around conservation, uh, mostly attached to, to the land issue. You understand we have a lot of issues around, um, we have a lot of issues around uh, community land. We have a lot of uh, issues around uh, human wildlife conflict. Uh, we, we we want to 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 talk about the situation, the conservation situation in Kajiado. Where are we in in matters conservation as a county? So I think we are looking at conservation from different quarters. So uh, Kajiado uh, has got probably only one main project, in it, and that is the uh, Abusen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we will, we have a few other pockets, the Mong Hills, uh, which have a forest status. Uh, the Namanga Hill, which have a forest areas. But outside that, mm -hmm. the rest of the area is really common. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, and, and so, if, if you look at Amboseli, for instance, there has been, uh, for many years, you remember that that is an area that belonged to the Masai community mm -hmm. and was taken you know, by government for purposes of creating uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, protected area mm -hmm. for one. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the benefit that has accrued from that over time, mm -hmm. it is quite substantial. Right? Um, there, there is a lot of tourism lodges mm -hmm. that have been created in and outside Amboseli. Mm -hmm. um, 
sure quite a number of community members are, are, are benefiting through employment. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's a whole industry around that. That's a small pocket, right? Um, if there are other things that could uh, are happening around uh, that area that are also competing with uh, the conservation efforts, but then nonetheless with proper planning, they can, you know, uh, happen together. Outside that, as I mentioned, is, is really community land. And yes, you have a lot of land, uh, you have a lot of elephants that are very destructive in their own ways as, as they move out in it. And as spaces should. Now the challenge we are starting to have is that um, because of the growing population and and our our our, our need mm -hmm. to actually gain more from our species, mm -hmm. we are starting to look at other commercial options. Mm -hmm. We are starting to change the form in which we are using our land, mm -hmm. and particularly Kajiado, you know, being very close to Nairobi, being a cosmopolitan place, mm -hmm. we we have more than you know the residents so the, the residents today are not only Maasai. Mm -hmm. Maasai in terms of their practice have been easy you know working with livestock and wildlife but today because of the other groups that have come and because of subdivision and people have bought up lands fences are coming up it, you know there's a lot more farming happening outside the areas the pockets of farming areas and, and that is causing of course because you're blocking you know pathways mm -hmm. and wildlife are used mm -hmm. as, as they move around uh, we are growing crops when they were not being grown before mm -hmm. and therefore if it is a, a highway for elephants we have a maze nice mm -hmm. for sure conflict will, 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 will arise. There, there was this uh, discussion recently some guys somewhere were planning to have uh, an avocado farm in, in Amboseli uh, which definitely was revoked by, by NEMA but what is your opinion on such actions by, by some uh, very funny characters who might want to to bring up such interventions in areas uh, uh, conflicting our conservation situation in, in maybe national parks. What is your opinion? I think what we don't have mm -hmm. are laws to control that, right? So I know that yes, we have in Amboseli an ecosystem management plan that is supposed to kind of direct what happens, but it is a very loose arrangement. So we are not we're not doing sufficient policy work. To ensure that even if we had arrangements, you know, are the farmers around that area aware of our intentions as conservations? Um, or, because in Kenya today, if I'm given my title, really, uh, I can do anything with my land. You know, it's, 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 it gives me the power. Uh, recently, there was a discussion to, to have an avocado farm in Amboseli. And, and we, we know that uh, that was a move which was revoked. But what is your opinion on, on this issue and other, other actions by, by some funny characters who might want to, to interfere with the natural ecosystem of, of the animals in national parks and other uh, protected areas? So, thank you for that question. I think avocado farming in, in itself is not bad. Mm -hmm. right? You know that yeah. it's a good cash crop, you know, yeah. people are cashing into it. I think the areas where we choose to do that is what we need to be careful around. But also, um, is, is, is the problem the avocado farmer or is the problem the conservation groups and the laws that we have put there? You know, do we have sufficient laws that actually bar people from doing avocado farm next to, next to the park? Mm -hmm. we, we do have, yes, an ecosystem management plan. Uh, we, Kadiado is working on a special plan to try and make sure that, you know, we, we are organized in terms of where we, we are putting what. I think we are short of some of those laws, and even where we have, um, we, we are not doing good enough policy uh, to make sure that. And then also, uh, have we made the farmers aware? Right. So if once I have my title, have we put a caveat to that title to say you can only use it for certain things? But if it's a very loose arrangement, then you find that we have conflicting uh, production arrangement. In, you know, we, we do have because a lot of our a lot of our uh, the ministries are competing to do different things. So the ministry that wildlife and tourism is under is pushing for conservation. Well, the Ministry of Agriculture, rightfully, will be pushing for expansion of agriculture. So the different ministries also are not speaking to each other. Okay, so that then we can make sure that we are guiding our farmers and the different types of production in the right way, so that then we don't create. Right now, in other fields, 
maybe in the uh, field of health, in the field of um, education, in other other common fields in, in the government. We have a lot of um, advocacy efforts by partners, by stakeholders to, to institute laws and policies to govern s s certain issues. Uh, uh, what, what exactly, maybe as a program, uh, Soralo, what, what exactly are we planning to do in issues around policy to influence even the county government, even uh, the national government to address such issues on maybe uh, human wildlife conflict and other uh, emergent issues? So we, we've been playing a big role in, in different levels, so at national level, where when the uh, uh, wildlife laws, the current act was being created, to really champion so that we have the community voice in there. But today we are lucky in that, you know, with devolution, um, we, we have this thing where um, counties start to look at national government. Yet we are also mandated at the county level to develop our own. Laws. You know, we have, we, we have, um, um, yeah, you know, a, our ability to create laws that are tailor-made to, to suit the interest of the locals. Yeah? However, whether we are taking, that, you know, we, we are able to, we are at the moment taking advantage of that is, is, a, is, a, different, is a different thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the human wildlife conflict, for instance, can only be, you know, resolved if we actually start to use local solutions. Mm -hmm. So for us as an organization, what we do is to always work with communities yes for sure bring the county government very close which we are working with at the moment and we're managing quite a little bit here today um, one of the things that we have partnered with the county government is in transition some of the so there was an old law um, that governed group rights. today that law has changed and, and we have what is called the community land act uh, however the community land act has come to be well the government has not actually put in sufficient resources to allow for the topic. So there was, you know, this moment where there is a law, there is a time for, for when people are supposed to transit to communities to, to community land, but nobody is farming the process. So right. we partnered with the country of the county to kind of catalyze and move that process forward. We've done very well. I think we transition. So that law has been uh, uh, supportive to the county government and we managed to transition the past few times last year. Mm -hmm. so, okay. And, and we will be working towards the transitioning another to Shukulo mm -hmm. you know, before the deadline, which is due. The politics in Group Ranch politics is, is so much. Uh, and, and I definitely understand you, you, you are part of the civil society. What is your role in this politics? Do you have any influence? I'm an Indian, uh... it, it means, <laughs> my, my brother, I, I, I have been part of that for a long time. Yeah. Not only working in Solalo, but actually in one of the group ranches. I was chairman for about 15 years. Oh, okay. So basically, mm -hmm. I have understood the mechanism and, and what happened. <laughs> and, and so as, as, as we are transitioning, I'm, I'm, I'm using my experience as, as an experienced chairperson, okay. which is good because a lot of those group branches also respect me for what I did in Okramaten while I was there. But also, I mean, I, I, I was chair for 15 years and finally you know, I, I asked the community to let me go. Um, to do other things, which was good because you live in a, in a manner that is with a lot of honor, yeah. and that way then people can call on. So a lot of them yeah. do call on me, and say, you know, can we? How can we? How can you help us? To, you know, go over this. Yeah. So, so with that and the respect that I gained yeah. as a, as a chair for a long time, yeah. is making it easy for, for for entry and to kind of make sure that yes, group practice group politics, as we are not engaging politics, at the moment, yeah. but we understand the mechanism how to make sure that you know, people then can get you still given your right you know to look for a position if you want but without necessarily uh, you know getting in there to, to direct who, who takes the position <laughs> interesting interesting uh present as a magic when i have a machine or a tools of your task award bongi lazawadi ambalo na piano na 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 uh prince william ambao ni zawadi ambao inahusisha mazingira na kutunza mazingira na, na we, we want to, to, to know as Soralo as, as a mentor to many other young conservationists in, in Kajado and in Kenya generally because I, I see your work have been captured broadly by Telegraph your work has also been captured by National Geographic your work has been captured by, by uh, other, other big uh, media institutions and, and other scholars what, what, what strategies have you put in place to, to 
bring up other conservationists who, who look up to you, look up to the work that you've been doing in, 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 in Kenya and the county. Very well, thank you. One of the things that, uh, with, with, with from my experience and where I came from, I, I came from a very humble background. Um, I remember that uh, when uh, I was finishing high school, I think my uh, last two cows were sold my dad and my dad, I was going to school crying. And, and this really uh, was part of my motivation to come back to support communities. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we grow other communities? One of the programs that Toronto has has to be education. Yeah? And we do a lot of mentorship. Today, Soralo hires about 100 people who work across the landscape. And within the staff themselves, we, we kind of uh, connect and ensure that we, we, we allow for growth. Yeah. So you have had people in the Parashina who connected with you. You know, you have worked with him to go through his master's program. You send the young guys to Oxford University go and get, you know, first hand uh, education on, on, on conservation matters. We, at the moment, have an, a program where we attach to the students who are coming from KWSTI, University of Nairobi, uh, name it, uh, Igato, who then, or, or during their holidays, during, you know, they come, they get attached to us for three months, and, and we, we mentor them so that then they get first hand information about what happens. So we also draw, uh, we have a lot of you know, learning arrangements where we bring students from the different universities, not only for attachment, mm -hmm. but for short term kind of engagement, go to the field, expose you. And, and that is really, and not only from Kenya. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, we also have a lot of students coming from the UK, US, name it, you know, across the globe, mm -hmm. uh, who, who come to us and, and from different uh, universities. We have, uh, you know, out of the work that we do, we have probably had about four or five PhD students come to work wow. with our program mm -hmm. um, to actually do their PhDs, mm -hmm. do their masters with us. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we also, at a lower level, we, we also have a, a program that are targeting uh, high school primary students mm -hmm. where we actually go and develop basic curriculum, which try to combine. Um, uh, elements of nature protection mm -hmm. conservation, but also to culture. We realize that the Maasai culture, particularly, mm -hmm. really in, in the manner in which it's set up uh, or practiced, is conservation in nature. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, by trying to combine how traditionally we conserve and the tools today, we want to reach out to every child so that even it doesn't matter where you go, even you can go and become a pilot, you can go and become a doctor. But, have a basic understanding of nature protection. Mm -hmm. Lastly, uh, we, we, we want and the viewers want to, to get the feeling uh, when uh, His Royal Highness mentioned your name as the winner of the Task Award 2020. And I, 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 saw, I personally saw the video. Uh, this is the video uh, uh, being uh, announced, Mr. John Kamanga being announced the winner of the Task Award 2020. Um, my job is to give that winner um, the award. And so the winner of the Tusk Conservation Award for 2020, um, and it gives me great pleasure to give it to um, John Kamanga. <laughs> Here it is. So what, what was the feeling like? I understand that we, you had other also two competitors. What was the feeling like? I, I so, it was interesting because yeah. while I was going through the process, yeah. uh, it was a three-month process yeah. of, of interviews and you know uh, uh, a lot of work. I didn't have that feeling. I was just doing my work, <laughs> and, and here we were and now, finally, or, or the last uh, day uh -huh. of, uh, of presentation. First, first of all, to actually get to meet, you know, His Royal Highness. Uh -huh. was for me, like what? <laughs> uh, not not really one of the, the many meetings that I have. Yeah. Uh, that was the moment. So while I was thinking about that, the manner in which the interview was done mm -hmm. took me aback a little bit because mm -hmm. here I was seated ready, mm -hmm. and then the way he, he started to ask questions, I was the last question. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> there was and, and the other candidates yeah. were equally very good, mm -hmm. you know, in terms yeah. of you know the, the subject of conservation. Mm -hmm. So when I listened to them, I'm like. What is left for me? I, mean, I think they have said everything. Is it because I'm the last one? You know, normally 
with, with, with our system, you yeah. think that uh, the rank is number one, yeah. and then the last one. Uh -huh. So when he started to, to, to question those other guys and they were very good, yeah. I thought, okay, yeah, we yeah, are, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> so, but when he then came to me, he yeah. asked me a couple of questions, mm -hmm. and again, I felt a little uncomfortable because he asked me, I think, one or two questions, and then I was cut. Mm -hmm. So there we are again, mm -hmm. like, I'm the last one. And they're even cutting me short. Yeah. It that, you know, <laughs> then you you just go on. <laughs> and then, yeah. in a flip in a, you know, in a, in a of a second, he's yeah. announcing, and, and my name was uh, the one that, that came up. Yeah. And I, I was really humbled. Yeah. Really humbled uh, that we, we have come this far. Really, and mm -hmm. it wasn't for me. For me, it was really about the community. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. about the story that we were telling. The story we were telling. Mm -hmm. Was that communities actually are champions and are supporters of competition mm -hmm. against the narrative that has always been told? The narrative has always been mm -hmm. that communities are the worst enemies of competition because mm -hmm. they live out there, mm -hmm. size skin lions, so all this negativity. Mm -hmm. But for, for, for that announcement to happen, mm -hmm. when I know that the story I was telling mm -hmm. was about communities mm -hmm. being uh, the custodians of wildlife, yeah. I was really, really happy. <laughs> Powerful, powerful. It has been a very, very powerful conversation uh, with you, Mr. John Kamanga. It is a pleasure uh, here at Kajero TV. We are uh, celebrating your efforts and uh, continue with the good work. And uh, our, to our viewers, uh, we are hosted today Mr. John Kamanga, who believes that communities are the custodians of wildlife. Until next time, usitoke usine popote hapa ni katika kiti moto Kajero TV katika mitandao yetu ya kijamii Kajero TV. Mungu aibariki Kajero.